Welcome to a lesson on subtracting mixed numbers. Here are the steps we're going to follow. Number one, we'll obtain a common denominator. Step two, we'll check to see if we have to borrow. Step three, we'll subtract the fractions and then the whole numbers, and then simplify if needed. Let's go ahead and look at our examples. So we'll have four and three-fourths minus two and one-fourth. So right away we should recognize we do have a common denominator, which is good news. It's gonna make this process a little bit easier. So we'll start by subtracting the fraction part. Three-fourths minus one-fourth would be two-fourths. Remember the denominator stays the same and we subtract our numerators. And then four minus two would be equal to two. So our difference is two and two-fourths. But of course two-fourths does simplify. That's the same as one-half. So our difference is two and one-half. Let's go ahead and try another one. Here we have six and four-fifths minus two and eleven-fifteenths. Let's write it in vertical form. Notice in this problem we do not have a common denominator. We can rewrite this fraction in fifteenths by multiplying the denominator and the numerator by three. So here we have six and twelve-fifteenths and this fraction is going to stay the same. It's going to be two and eleven fifteenths. Remember, we are subtracting here. Now, if we take a look at the fraction part, we have twelve fifteenths minus eleven fifteenths. Again, we don't have to borrow, so we'll have one fifteenth. And then we have six minus two. That's going to give us four. Our difference is four and one fifteenth. Now, let's go and take a look at a couple examples where we have to borrow. Let's write this in vertical form. Okay, our first goal is to obtain a common denominator. The least common denominator here is going to be 24 because 24 is the least common multiple of six and eight. So we're gonna multiply this fraction by three over three, multiply this fraction by four over four. Notice our denominators are both 24. This will be five and nine twenty-fourths. And here we have two and twenty twenty-fourths. So here we do have a problem. We can't take away twenty twenty-fourths from nine twenty-fourths because this is too small. So what we have to do is go over this five and borrow one. And so that we can really understand what's happening here, I'm gonna go ahead and write this as four plus one and nine twenty-fourths. And I'll leave this the same, minus two and twenty. Notice the five is still here. We just wrote it as four plus one. Now what we're going to do is rewrite this as an improper fraction. So we'll have four and twenty-four times one plus nine. That'll be thirty-three twenty-fourths. And we'll again leave this fraction the same. Okay, so that's the key to borrowing. We're gonna borrow one from the five, which changes this to a four, and this changes nine twenty-fourths to one and nine twenty-fourths. And then we rewrite this as an improper fraction. And now we can subtract. Thirty-three twenty-fourths minus twenty twenty-fourths would be thirteen twenty-fourths. And then four minus two, of course, is two. So our difference is two and thirteen twenty-fourths. Now a lot of textbooks skip this step, but until you really understand, but until you really understand where this fraction here comes from, I think it's important to show that you're borrowing one and then converting it to an improper fraction. Let's try another. Let's write this in vertical form. First thing we have to do is obtain a common denominator. We could use 60 but 30 is actually the least common denominator. So we're gonna multiply this by three over three. That'll give us 30 here. We'll multiply this fraction by five over five. So we're gonna have seven and three thirtieths minus two and five thirtieths. And notice again, we can't subtract five thirtieths from three thirtieths because this isn't big enough. So we're gonna go ahead and borrow one from the seven. If we borrow one from the seven, we're gonna have six plus 
1 and 3 thirtieths. This will stay the same. And the last step is to convert this to an improper fraction. So we'll have 6 and 30 times 1 plus 3, that'll be 33 thirtieths. This will stay the same, minus 2 and 5 thirtieths. So 33 thirtieths minus 5 thirtieths would be 28 thirtieths. 6 minus 2 would be 4. Now 28 thirtieths can be simplified. They both have a common factor of 2. So this simplifies to 4 and 14 fifteenths. Okay, I think we have time for one more. Here we have 12 minus 8 and 3 elevenths. I'm going to write it in vertical form. Now this one's a little bit different. We can't take away 3 elevenths from nothing, so again, we do have to borrow. So I'm going to go ahead and write this as 11 plus 1. We'll keep this the same. And since we need to have a common denominator of 11, we're going to go ahead and rewrite 1 as 11 elevenths. So again, we had to borrow 1, and then we converted this 1 to 11 elevenths, and now we can perform the subtraction. 11 elevenths minus 3 elevenths would be 8 elevenths, and then 11 minus 8 would be 3. This fraction does not simplify, so we're done. And that's also going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching.